Here is what black-eyed Susan's Rudbeckia herta look like in full bloom. Let's take a look at what established patches of black-eyed Susan's look like in each season. So in a moment here, we're going to start in March, which is early spring, of course, and you can see some greenery hugging the ground here. This is some growth coming up that will end up blooming, but it can also contain some first year growth, which likely won't bloom this year. So black-eyed Susans are often biennial, meaning they have a two-year life cycle. So from seed in the first year, you often get this first year growth that's down along the ground like this, starting in the fall or spring and looking mostly like this until next spring when it starts to grow up and bloom. So we'll see both first year growth and second year growth in this year long look at black eyed Susans uh, because in these established patches of black eyed Susans we have both first and second year growth to look at. So you can see here that um, Right, as I've said, these basil leaves are just hugging the ground. They're not too large yet. I think they're an unattractive green. <laughs> and there's a few more there. Very tiny, early March. So now we've jumped to about mid-April, and you can see those same ground-hugging leaves there as before, but you can start to see that some are growing upwards. Uh, in the z-coordinate direction, if you will. They're still not very tall yet, but I find that the green is becoming more attractive. We have are still around the same time of mid to late April. This is in a different patch, a different area. You can see these ones are a little bit taller than the other ones. And this growth would certainly be not first year growth. This, these are all going to bloom. This is late April now, and this is um, a patch we have just seen, and we can see that they are just getting taller. Now they're about six inches tall, and I find them to be a very lovely green. And these will all bloom. Down below them, where it's a little hard to see, kind of in the leaves there, is some of the first year growth, which won't do much this year except just be green and along the ground. And all these darlings coming up are going to actually bloom this year. This is early May, and uh, so last was late April, this is early May, and here you can see a little better some of that first year growth hugging the ground, but then also you can see uh, these patches are getting a little taller now, maybe a little taller than six inches. This is late May, so we're still in the springtime, and you can certainly see now uh, those tall tall ones coming up are definitely, of course, going to give us blooms and maybe nine inches tall, perhaps. This separate little section, they're a, a, a smidge shorter in this section, but still on their way up. Early June still I would say early June is still late spring and now they are getting quite a bit taller they might even be a whole foot tall at this point so throughout early to mid to late spring all through spring really uh, they are just green and growing tall this is mid-June and you can see uh, this patch is getting very tall now these are probably two feet tall at this point All right, we've gotten ourselves to late June. Still getting taller, as you can see. Uh, these are probably about two feet tall. Now we're in early July, and when you look closer here, they haven't gotten much taller. These are probably two or two and a half feet tall. But as you look closely, you can start to see where they will bloom. You can start to see the beginnings of little buds here in early July, uh, summertime, of course. So interestingly, 
This is at that same time as the last clip you saw. This is just in another part of town. And so in another part of town, uh, they're already fully blooming. And the point of showing you this is just to say within your own yard or within your own city or town or even your the region of your state, there are lots of micro environments, a little hotter, a little colder, more wet, less wet. Um, and so same flower uh, can bloom at different times. So in one yard I was showing you they're almost getting their little flower buds and here they're already blooming. And so this can also happen within your yard. You know, the ones in the front yard are blooming, the ones in the backyard are not, that type of thing. So we are still in early July here, and this is another patch uh, that are, I suppose you might say, just starting to bloom. You can see now that they're yellow on the top. Um, they're starting to make their buds. These ones are about two to three feet tall. In the end, um, a lot of patches will end up being two to three feet tall. And most people are not looking at the way bottom, but if you look at the way bottom, uh, you often can see first year growth hugging the ground. But up on top is where most people are looking, which is where we are now mid-July, right in the middle of summer, and we are officially getting blooms on our black-eyed Susans. And you can see here um, some of them are bloomed and there are many that are still buds. So there, are, this is part of how black-eyed Susans will bloom for so many weeks, maybe a month or a month and a half. So here we are at the end of July. And at the end of July here, I would say we are fully in bloom. The most exciting time when you have a black-eyed Susan plant. And down there, if you look, you can still see more buds coming up. So this patch of black-eyed Susans will continue to be blooming for a while. Uh, but you can see it's quite a show, is not it, is it not? <laughs> so here we are at the end of August. And you can see that... Um, some of them are spent now. The petals are falling off. Many of them are still blooming, though, and look lovely. And uh, many of them are flopping over. Uh, I believe we were in a little bit of a drought at this time, so more watering might have kept them more upright. Here is early September, so we're starting to get into fall time now, right? Uh, and this patch is still quite lively in blooms. So... From July until here in early September, we're still seeing a lot of beautiful blooms. Although, of course, you can still see some dying back. I'm showing you along the ground here is some first year growth. So all of that will be blooming next year. This year it just hugs the ground. This is still September, still fall time, early-ish September. In this patch, you can see that we're at maybe half blooms, half what I call black tops, which is that they've lost their petals and have are going to seed now. So they're starting, all the ones that have been pollinated, which they will be, uh, will start making all these seeds, right? So this is still early to mid-September, a different patch, and these are maybe a little further along in going to seed. More petals have dropped, more of the blooms are done, and you can see more of the black tops, um, which is all of the seeds getting made. And so these seeds will be eaten by birds, which is lovely to see. And many of them will drop to the ground. All right, here we are in early November. And by early November, this what once was a beautiful flowering patch is now all uh, black tops. So it has all gone to seed. And so here I'm showing rubbing off some of the seed and some of the seed uh, casing, I guess you would call it. And again, birds, uh, finches especially, but birds will come and eat these seeds, which is fun to watch. And a lot of these seeds will drop to the ground and become first year growth for next year. So we are about mid-November now. A little bit of snow has come. And we're all blacktop now. 
uh, all gone to seed. There's a lot of seed still in there, so that's not all without seed. That is a lot of seed still in there, heavy with snow. The stalks are dry now and brown, as you can see. Most of the foliage has fallen off. As you get lower along the ground, even under snow, you can see some greenery. And that greenery is some of the just foliage still left over. And some of that is first year growth. First year growth just starting now and some that is still left from spring. So this is now early January, which looks a lot like what you saw in November, which is the seed uh, seeds on top and there can still be uh, seeds in there now they aren't totally spent uh, black-eyed Susans hold on to seeds pretty tight and down at the bottom as in November you can still see that there can be uh, some greenery even when it's very cold some of that greenery will really stick around here we are in late January Obviously, it has snowed. Uh, this particular snow was very wet and very heavy, and a lot of plants toppled over, including the sort of standing dead, if you will, stalks of these black-eyed Susans. So here we are in early February. Now, there's a lot of other plant stalks here, but you can see the little black heads on the black-eyed Susans. This was once a very thick patch of black-eyed Susans. That heavy snow knocked a lot over, but you can still see some standing up. You can see a little greenery down underneath, which is like to be that first year growth. And here we are still uh, in February after another snow, and you can see a little more clearly these standing dead stalks with the uh, seed heads on top. There can still be some seed left in there, which is partly why I keep them up. That way birds will have all winter seeds to come to for however long the seeds stay there. And whatever the weather conditions are that knock those seeds to the ground to keep these patches going, I will keep them up so that it can keep reseeding itself. So every year there'll be first year growth and blooming growth. So you may recognize, uh, here we are, back where we started, uh, early March, getting into the springtime. And you can see some of the brown dried stalks have fallen onto the ground. So many people will clip these for spring growth to come in and to make it look nice to our eyes. I usually leave those dried stalks on the ground, or maybe I gather them up and stick them somewhere else in the yard. The point being, there are several species of bees our little pollinators that use those dried stalks uh, to lay eggs and they make little nests in them. So even those what I call standing dead stalks have a purpose here in the pollinator life cycle. So it's not just about bees coming to flowers but they can use the stalks of those dead springtime black-eyed Susans uh, as part of their life cycle as well. And as before, you can see that green ground hugging growth again, those basil leaves, um, some of that coming up new here in the spring, some of that first year growth that has started in the fall. And so you really do have something to see all year round with black-eyed Susans, which is really nice. 